I think the biggest difference between last year and this year is that uh, we have some really good team chemistry this year. We have a tight group of guys. We really like each other, and it shows on the court. Just having a deeper roster this year, I mean, we've got guys even off the bench that I feel like can get buckets anywhere. So I feel like that's just the biggest difference. And yeah, just being able to be closer because we have the longer season this year. We only had a month last year, so. We have all the pieces. We got Tavari as a guard. We got the bigs and Will, Billy, Nick. We have shooters. We're just an all around just, we can score however. If our three's not going in, we can take it inside. If we can't take it inside, we can shoot the threes. I think this is just a super successful year for us. and It's exciting to see what we're gonna do. During tryouts, I felt like we knew that we were going to have a competitive group with two classes back to back that had a lot of success when they were freshmen and sophomores with a you know relatively deep roster of players with skill and you know very competitive young men with good chemistry. I think uh, the coaches the coaching staff we felt like we knew we were going to have a chance to compete with pretty much everybody on our schedule. Um, we did have a chance this summer to play against good competition uh, in some um, like summer league type games and shootouts and, and the guys had success there. So we knew that probably had a chance to, to win games against good teams, but you never really know until you start playing in the regular season. As intramurals started, you got to see how they played, how they worked the offense and how they played defense as well. So once you fold up the tryouts, you, you weren't that starstruck. You were pretty ready. Coming into the year, we knew we had a really great group of guys, but it really came down to whether or not we were going to put the work in to kind of gel as a team and be able to go as far as we possibly can. The, this, the team in 2022 stacks up with a lot of the other teams that we've had. Yeah, we've kind of proved it in the past couple of weeks that we can we can beat whoever we need to, but we just need to put the work in and get it done. Going into the Thanksgiving tournament, we kind of knew what we had uh, as far as the depth of the roster and um, you know what what we saw over the summer, um, and, and felt confident going in that the team was going to be able to compete with good competition. You know, when when you're scrimmaging in the preseason, you have 10 to 14 guys that are getting constant repetition in practice. When you start playing against other teams, now you have five guys on the floor and the rest of the guys sitting on the bench and a few guys rotating in. Um, you know, some players who were getting a lot of playing time during the preseason, now when you have actual games going on, they're getting a couple minutes here and there and, and how do they respond to just playing a little bit. So you really never know how it's going to go. What are your goals for the season? Uh, definitely win conference, make a run for states, put on a show for the kids, have a good time. I think our first game we played kind of rough in the tournament, but once we started getting more together and getting more chemistry, start, things started building off that and became a lot better team. Yeah, so uh, the turkey tournament, uh, it was kind of a good starter for us. We, we played three good teams. Uh, we beat them all, but it kind of... It was kind of like stepping stones to what, the, what we would start off the season with. It was the beginning of the season, and I don't know, we were all just so eager to get the season started and get it going because we knew that, you know, we had such a bright future. You know, the season was going to be great. We just had to get it off on the right foot. And then from there on, you know, just a couple other wins and brought home our first trophy of the season. Heading into the Glenbard West game that we played in December, if I remember correctly, that was our, our first game after Thanksgiving. So we played three Thanksgiving games and then got ready to play against Glenbard West. We fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, had the opportunity to play Glenbard West three times in the um, 2021 season, um, you know, three times in like five weeks. They're a different team this year, but they have a lot of guys playing this year that were with them last year. And, um, you know, it was kind of an unpleasant experience when we played them last season. Um, 
And so we, at least we knew we knew the the level of athlete, the level of player that we were going to see um, this year with their group. You know, the the sheer size across the board of their first five players is kind of unprecedented. You know, we've had some big teams here in the past, but nothing that quite matched the the size that Glenbard throws out there this year. So, you know, going into that game, we did what we could to to prepare for that, um, to prepare for the defense that they play. And really, that our main focus going into that game was, how are we going to handle the defense that, that Glenbard West plays? That was our focus for pretty much four or five days. Um, and I thought we did a good job preparing for it. Well, go, I mean, going into the first time we played them, we knew that they were going to be really good. Just seeing all the stuff on social media and having playing them in AAU and stuff, we, we knew how big they were. Also, like watching film on Huddle, like we knew what zone they were playing. Um, in practice that week, it was kind of like, see what we can do against their zone. Just throw out our five biggest guys out there. In the walkthroughs, personally, I was really nervous, but I think the seniors definitely took a mature standpoint and uh, were comfortable going into it and kind of knew what they were getting into because they'd seen those guys before. But like when you hear that the whole starting lineup is going Division One, like it's pretty intimidating. They've got a lot of size, really solid players, and I feel like they have a, like they're, they're well coached and know what to perform against us. So um, obviously they're the top team in the state. We knew that coming in. I don't think we were as prepared as we think we should have been. I think we came in not knowing really how good they were and how good we have to play to hang with them. We, we were with them early and then in the end our defense, we just didn't hang with them that first time. Glenbar West defense, they have the one through one, which is a zone trap. They try to steal the ball from you. They try to get the easy ones. It's a zone where you just try to take the corners and man up, take the middle away. And just especially with their size of everyone being basically over 6'6", six, six, it's and really effective for them and I just think it's it's really good for them to play obviously because they, they wouldn't match up very well against a lot of these smaller these a lot of these smaller teams and I just think it's definitely a really hard defense to play against the actual game when it happened we felt pretty good with with how the, the guys played in the first half um, I think we were down like 15 at halftime but we felt very good about how we attack their pressure. They, they tried to, to full court press and the guys did a nice job of handling it and actually took advantage of it and scored several times in that game, which um, speaking with the Glenbard West coaches, they actually had to kind of take that press off because of the way that the guys did a nice job attacking it. Um, but then in the second half, uh, they, they stuck to their half court 1-3-1 one, one defense. And really, the, the issue that we faced in the second half was um, then Glenbard really turned it on offensively. And I think they scored on 10 of their 12 possessions in the first or in the third quarter. And, um, you know, they really created separation there. Um, but we were we were pleased with the preparation and pleased with um, how we played, at least in the first half, and then um, learned a lot from that, which helped us later on down the road. I don't think we were playing hard enough and you know we, we had lower expectations than we probably should have and they played harder than us and they beat us on their court. Riverside Brookfield is a very good team. They won their regional this year. I think they won their league. Um, you know, so they're a very good team. They, they have a lot of good players, very talented. It's a game against RB. I feel like we shouldn't have lost that game. Like that was, that was disappointing for us. That weekend in general, after the Glenbard game, I don't think we were taking RB seriously either. It was the beginning of the season. We kind of I don't think we were playing our best basketball. I think we were playing too individual. We weren't passing it around. We were just shooting threes. We were, I don't think we were playing together as a team yet. Playing them the day after Glenbard West was a really tough gear shift. The kids came off of the Glenbard West game. I think, you know, kind of, I, I wouldn't say confidence shaken or anything like that, but down, you know, it was, it was a tough day to bounce back to play another really good team, and especially a team like RB, who is kind of completely opposite style. Yeah, we came out flat. We didn't have any energy, and if we don't have any energy, we don't play very well. We played well for the first half, and then kind of um, struggled for a stretch of the, the late second quarter, 
third quarter, got down, and then RB did a nice job of of making shots and playing really well. And um, you know that was it was a tough day to play RB. They played well, and our guys didn't have their best night. Go back and play them again, really, because I just wasn't focused. You know, they were screaming at me the whole game, saying a whole bunch of stuff, and I really I, I say it got to me a little bit. I was trying to do too much at times. I think after that game at RB, and we started getting a lot closer and going a lot harder. So kind of brought us back to realization that we need to keep going harder in practice. I've known Tavari since he was, he was in between eighth grade and freshman year. So before he started high school, uh, someone who was a senior here at the time, his name was Alex Ridge. He brought him by to a workout and, you know, told me that I, I would probably like working with him and, and thinks he can be really good. Before Alex brought Tavari to that one workout, I had no idea who Tavari was, never heard his name, didn't know who he was. He was just some kid who walked in. Uh, granted, in the first workout, he was actually really lazy for like the first 30 minutes. And I had to have a little talk with him on picking up his motor and, and his energy a little bit. Uh, but again, when it got to competition-based uh, drills that we were doing, I, I told him to, you know, show me everything that he has and three possessions in a row he did some moves that you know weren't too complicated but it was the change of speed and quickness which he was doing it with and I in previous years have been mentored by Drew Hanlon who is a who is an NBA skills trainer and consultant and you know I've been around guys in the gym like Zach Levine and Joel Embiid, Jordan Clarkson, Bradley Beal, guys who are really athletic and fast and you know, when you're around those guys, you can kind of see what kind of quickness is at that level. And that first workout with Tavari, it was obvious that he had that unique quickness change of pace to him as well. In terms of players that I myself have overseen their development and have been in full charge of their development, yes, he's probably the most talented and skilled kid that I've worked with. Uh, with the highest potential. Kind of as Tavari was, he was going from sophomore year to junior year, and that was when he really kind of first started to get noticed was that summer when he played AAU with Young and Reckless. Um, and there was, you know, as, as he was getting better and he was improving and moving up the ranks, I was getting more respect from other players in the area. And so I actually had my first Division I prospect or Division One player, I'm sorry, come to a workout, and Tavari was partnered up with him, and I thought it was going to be competitive for Tavari, but when they started playing one-on-one -on -one at the end of our workouts, uh, Tavari ended up beating the kid five spots to nothing with scores of like seven to two at each spot. So that Division One player actually never came back to a workout of mine, so Tavari actually ruined uh, my first opportunity working with a Division One athlete. <laughs> I think where I've helped him most is really just kind of giving, me him, giving him structure and, and giving him a customized blueprint for himself to you know, reach the levels and, attain, and reach the goals that he wants to achieve. With Tavari, we, we basically identified you know, what his, obviously his strengths and weaknesses were, and we, we made a SWAT list, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You know, the first thing that we worked on for a whole summer, like 90 days straight, was just footwork and change of pace. And he probably hated me the first two weeks. Going into the, the Hinsdale Central game, which followed the weekend of playing Glenbard West and Riverside Brookfield, I think it actually turned out to be the perfect time to play that game because, you know, nothing gets the guys focused like playing against Hinsdale Central. Um, and so they, it, it didn't take much to, to get the guys attention. Um, we did, what we, what we did try to focus on that week was learning from mistakes or areas that we needed to improve on, um, from the previous weekend, um, to prepare for, uh, winning games against Hinsdale Central. And I think York was the following day and then leading into the rest of the season. So as a coach, I was focusing on not only preparing for the Hinsdale game, but also what do we need to do as a team 
to be the best team that we can be. So we, we made some changes that week about how we were going to play offensively and defensively. Uh, one thing that we did defensively that week was we kind of decided that we were just going to get up and try to pressure teams as much as we could. Um, and I think the, the kids really jumped on board of when we said we're going to attack Hinsdale Central in the full court and make them handle the ball against full court pressure. I think they really enjoyed doing that. Um, and then also kind of adjusted how we were playing offensively to give the kids a little bit more freedom. Um, and it, you know, it, it worked in our favor when we, when we showed up to play that Friday against Hinsdale. We just had to be ourselves. And in practice, we were just kind of doing what we normally do. We knew that it wasn't really going to affect us. And we just had to keep coming out and playing. I mean, you always got to feel confident when you're playing your rival. Devil K, Hinsdale K. I think LT always has a chip on their shoulder because they're usually the better team. So I'm always confident going into that game. It's a really fun game to look forward to. They're, the stadium's always filled. There's always a lot of energy, so it's important that to feel confident in games like those because you don't get you only get two of those a year, and they're your best games. So rivalry games are always your best games, and you always got to come out and play your best. So if you're not confident, you're not going to win that game. The buildup for the game against Hinsdale at Hinsdale was definitely a grind. We played them in summer league here and lost to them, so we knew that we had to put everything we possibly could into practice that week to get ready to beat them, especially on their own home court. It was a different atmosphere, and obviously we, we brought the fans, and it helped a lot. Uh, against Hinsdale, we were just trying to come out with good intensity and just play together as a team and just keep staying in our role and do what we do best. Growing up, watching all the games, Hinsdale versus LT, it's a game that you circle on your calendars at the beginning of every season, so just going there, you're definitely playing hard every game, and especially against them, the rivalry. So we always want to beat them, it's great. The best part of being on the bench was like just like the energy, you know, because I feel like those guys feed off my energy on the bench because I'm just happy to be there, you know, so when I get up and I get rowdy, everybody else just matches my energy and it's great, bro. Pre-game, you try to keep it as normal as possible, but obviously the LT versus Hinsdale battle, it's just that rivalry, it's just something in the, in the water. You just, you get real excited and then when the game time comes, you're just on edge. You know, it, I, I find it, we have to find the right balance when we play Hinsdale Central because sometimes guys can get a little bit too amped up, too caught up in this is LT against Hinsdale. Uh, no one likes Central. It's just like mutual across the conference, everyone hates them. So everyone enjoys beating them, which is, I, I thought was really fun. I feel like that environment's always crazy. And you know, the first time we had, we had a couple games where there were a couple people, but that game was like, they were, they were rowdy. So that, that, that was fun. Uh, environments like that, not a, lot of, not a lot of people get to play in. Well, I, I do think, I do remember some specifics about that game that, that it was really clear that, that Will was playing with a level of passion. Not, not that he doesn't play hard on a regular basis, but it was really important to him that Lions Township won that game. And I think that that was contagious to the rest of the team. It was infectious. Rebounds, loose balls, defending their bigger players. Um, you know, Will was a huge factor early in that game, and I think it carried out throughout you know, ripping the ball out of people's hands, making layups at the rim, getting the free throw line. Will definitely had a huge impact on that game. The atmosphere at Hinsdale was pretty impressive. I had gotten a glimpse of what fans felt like during the football season for the first time, but it was a whole different feeling. It was it was pretty surreal because there were we we probably 
had more fans there than Hinsdale did, and it was their whiteout game. Basketball is a game of runs, so you man, you know, they, they go on a run, we go on a run, so that was their run. When we came into halftime, we were like, all right, that was their run, now don't let them score this third quarter and go out and do our thing, and that's exactly what we did, and you know, you play hard, have fun, and the rest will come. So the, the runs come, you just, you play hard and the score, you know. I think that the message at halftime was basically, we just need to relax and continue doing what we've been doing to be successful, sharing the ball offensively, um, making the right play. If you have an open shot, shoot it. If you don't, find the next open guy. We just took it to him right in the second half, started hitting shots, getting to the rim. Tavari started playing really well, and yeah, we beat him on their plays, which was really fun. You know, Tavari made some big plays. He had a breakaway dunk that, that was a big play. I think the the kids the kids in the second half, they they played within themselves, and didn't let. I, I think in the, I think in the first half, the kids let the atmosphere kind of impact how they were playing. I think the second half, um, they got more comfortable in the environment and relaxed. That's what we talked about at halftime too. Was just relax. It had been a while. You know, the previous year, there were hardly any fans in the building. For half the season, there were none. And then for the second half of the season, there were some parents there. This was really the first time that they had been in a, in a gym with a fan base on both sides that were really getting after each other and getting after the guys on the floor. So I think it took a while to kind of settle in. I think once they settled in and, and the second half got comfortable, the environment was out of their head, and then they, they were just playing and re playing relaxed. So I think that was probably, to me, that was the biggest aspect of, of why the second half went better than the first. Last sophomore year, that's the last time we really played them. And we lost junior year, so we kind of came and we played pissed off, and I think that really showed. My best memory of the season is just beating Hinsdale. We all, me and all my guys, we hate Hinsdale. So beating them, it's just always great. Yeah, for sure. I, f I feel like when we played at Hinsdale and we beat them, that was definitely a big confidence boost for us because um, they're, they're also a really solid team, and we, we love beating them at their place when they pack the gym. So it was a great experience for us. I mean, they had, their gym is awesome to play in. And we, we played very well, and a lot of guys contributed. So I feel like definitely that set the tone for the rest of the season.